By the way, there's going to be a lot of, we call this the silent laughter. Oh, yeah, the silent podcast. laughter. Your listeners are going to tune out because they're going to think the podcast ended four <laughs> times. <laughs> At least, bare minimum. Is there a bush you want to get in? <laughs> Right here. What's up, you guys? Welcome to the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale. And this week's guest, I cannot wait to introduce. She is one of my favorite people in the entire world. She was actually... I think the first guest that I ever had on this podcast, uh, you've seen her on Tattoo Redo on Netflix, Surviving Paradise on Netflix. Uh, she has an amazing podcast herself called The Sharp Tongue Podcast. The one, the only, Jessamay Peluso. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Oh, so glad you're here. I'm so excited. We're matching. Yeah, we always have some sort of matching sitch. We're giving like a little kickoff to summer vibe. Yeah, we look like we're hosting the reboot of TRL. Mm, God, I wish. Or, or what was the each thing they did with like the grind. The grind. <gasps> God. So many people don't remember the grind. I think I just aged us. Yeah. Hardcore. Yeah. Do people I, even remember TRL? I, yeah, of course. But like the grind was like hosted by Eric Nice. Shirtless constantly. And I think maybe like maybe a Daisy Fuentes. Oh, for sure a Daisy Fuentes <laughs> with a sports update. <laughs> <laughs> and it would just be like hot people on a box. Uh, uh, just like. Oh gosh. Hot people on a box. Uh huh. <laughs> the easiest, cheapest television. Really? And like the slipperiest box ever. Yes. I, we don't even know if anyone died. There were never reports, but for sure people died in the pool. Yeah. Uh, at the beach house, MTV beach house. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Drowning. Oh, people got chlamydia. Uh, I'm sure. You came in with a chlamydia. Yeah. You came in, you left maybe with an <laughs> EpiPen. I don't know. I felt like it, I always wanted to go. You know I, what's crazy? I have a, a story about Eric Nice Nice. 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 He was so hot. He was, and he always had like those wooded beaded necklaces. He had like the annoying guy necklace situation. He was a model. He was a model. Yeah. Was he a model? He was a model on the first season of The Real World, New York. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And then he the kind of was season. like, I'm going to do hip hop. And we were like, no. And then he was like, this is hip hop. Oh, he turned God. into that lady. I love that woman. <laughs> love her so much. She's like back. She's like, is she back oh, like yeah, in real back. life? Uh, well, she's back like on TikTok now. Like TikTok is just revamping people's careers. Yes, just distracting us from the real world, what's going on mm -hmm. in the real world. Let's watch people dancing. Yeah. Worlds are burning, but the TikTok lady is back. She's back. Just pop it, lock it. <laughs> Hip hop's it. about the energy. <laughs> it's all about the beat. It's like, ma'am, you're four beats behind. The beat left the room. <laughs> the beat, like, is out for a smoke break right now. <laughs> okay, wait, there's so much I want to ask you. Okay, side note, I worked for a guy who was friends with Eric. Nice. Nice. And then used him to try to get me to date him. Oh. Not Eric, but the guy. Oh. Yeah, so hired me to be a copywriter. I still to this day don't know what that means. Uh -huh. I was in an hour in an office for like six hours copywriting. Couldn't tell you what I did. <laughs> Couldn't tell you what I did. Couldn't tell you what it means. No rights to be copied. <laughs> no rights to be copied. <laughs> then he's like, I have some night work. And I was like, cool. And so he had me meet him at this place with Eric Niece. niece. <laughs> it's not the hard last name. Actually, it wasn't Eric Niece. It was Eric's niece. Eric's. Yeah. And he doesn't have anybody talk to him directly. <laughs> <laughs> Just his niece. Just Eric's niece. Who's on her niece, but yes, not in that way. Right. She lost everything below her knee in a horrible, in a horrible lawnmower horrible. accident. I, yeah, yeah. And then she actually got thrown into the MTV Beach House pool and almost drowned. Cost. She couldn't kick to save her life. <laughs> everybody got sad <laughs> So anyways, um, Eric Nice, like I tried to get me to, to date him because he was friends with Eric Nice. So he's like, there's no job. I just want you to be my girlfriend. And I was hoping Eric would impress you. And I'm like, oh, God, every just the things you do as a girl in New York. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I, I guess I'm going back to being poor. Yeah. American sociopath. Yes. Uh, now streaming on uh, <laughs> Peacock. Wait, uh, I want to ask you a question. Ask me. Um, was it was something about someone being hot? Oh, we were talking about something and now I can't remember what it was. Oh, this thing going around about Jessica Simpson. Was she a bad singer? Oh, the whole time? The whole were we gaslit? <laughs> <laughs> Are my ears? What is it? I mean What's the science behind Jessica Simpson's alto, soprano, it was non-existent? Something because I remember when I Want to Love You Forever came out. That was like her big song where she was in like the airplane hangar. But then, <laughs> yeah, and she was like this Christian girl. But then, like, I want to say a year or two ago, people were like, 
bringing the song back up and they're like, oh, once you hear the lyrics, you'll never hear them the same again. And she's like, uh, the line, the line's like, cause you got me here. I'm down on my knees. I want to love you forever. And it's all like, like fellatio. Like, well, it's like, yeah, like splash your love all over me. Something like that. I can't, I can't oh, remember. God, was everything just sexual? Yeah. Was everyone being touched and we were all lied to? Mm -hmm. Well, these... it's funny because today, um, <laughs> I was getting ready to be here and I have my, Michelle Branch playlist playing. Yes, you do. Of course yeah. you do. And Ashley Simpson came on and it was, you make me want a la la. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck was that? And we all were just like. I don't remember that song. It was like, you can dress me up in diamonds. Like she was like this like bad girl. And we like, everyone was like gaslit. Yeah, I think we all were gaslit yeah. from all those songs. The but only my... one who could sing was Christina Aguilera. Yeah. And, and Britney. Yeah. But they, they... Mandy Moore could do it, okay. Mandy Moore, that's true. JoJo, not Siwa. Oh, yo, I saw jo... <clears throat> JoJo Siwa with the construction headbanger and Mario Lopez. <laughs> Mario Lopez? I know. Mario Lopez. He's 122. Stop it. But looks great. Looks great. Everything's snap. I, yeah. I guarantee there's a really tight clip in the back. For sure. He just takes it off and looks like a St. Bernard. Yeah, yeah, he's like one of those. He's like an octopus if it were a man, like an octopus face on a man head. Like Pirates of the Caribbean? Exactly that guy. <laughs> R.I.P. Jeffrey Rush. <laughs> <laughs> you just, do you think Mario Lopez goes home, takes his skin off, and it's just squid? <laughs> it's giving squid? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. But I also would like the number two is dermatologist as well. I like to throw hate, but also get the information. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Do, is, um, do just for our <laughs> listeners, Jessime Peluso th has a conspiracy theory <laughs> that Mario Lopez is the pirate squid man from Pirates of the Caribbean. It, there was no Jeffrey Rush the entire time. It was Mario Lopez on Access Wait, Hollywood. Did Jeffrey Rush even die? No. <laughs> He's like in the Bahamas somewhere. Is he for real? He's not dead? I thought Jeffrey Rush died. All those people have heart attacks. <laughs> if you're an older Irish or British guy and you're pasty, you die of a heart attack. Oh, he's still alive. Oh, wow. Goofed. <laughs> <laughs> 72 and thriving. Yeah. He looks great. Yep. He looks like he yachts on the weekends. I love that. I love that great. for him. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> Your audience, is, this episode is just going to think this whole thing was like, and it could have been a phone call. Between no! you and I. <laughs> Absolutely. But by kidding. the way, I feel like our phone call chats are podcast yeah, episodes. They have been our yeah. whole life. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but back to Jessica Simpson, then we'll get into it. Like I th <gasps> that one clip where she's singing with Jewel. <laughs> and Jewel's just like What the fuck? Her teeth are like running away from the microphone because <laughs> they're like embarrassed to <laughs> <laughs> They were scared straight. <laughs> Oh, reminds me of high school. <laughs> Scared Straight would be a great, great title for you for something. We take 10 gay people, <laughs> put them in a spooked house. We compete with the conversion camps and see who can straighten them first. <laughs> Sponsored by... The Welch's Grape Juice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I can't breathe. I know it's good. It's good. It's good when you can't I have breathe. I a unitard on. Perfect. <laughs> if you call me a unitard one more time, it's I want to. I want to talk about the Netflix. This is joke fest. Holy fungal! You mentioned it on your podcast, Sharp Tongue Podcast, the very end of your episode. Fair game. But fair I was going to start this one with it. Okay. So there was an incident. I'll let you take it from here. And uh, yeah, it's your story. I want you to share it. Well, I was going to say I would love your perspective, okay. but if you want me to share it, I mean, I fine, I'll go. But yeah. um. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, my laugh is not a Bridgestone tire running out of air. I realize <laughs> that it sounds like something's damaged, esophageally speaking. Yeah. It very well may be. Oh, we'll get a comment, I'm sure, that's like, this lady <laughs> needs to stop smoking 18 packs of camel crushes a day. <laughs> I I'm like, it's actually 15. It's so. actually 15 and it's sativa. How dare you? It's good for your heart and your soul. Thank you. So, take it away. During the Netflix is a joke festival, Jessie Mae was hosting or not hosting. She was actually doing her own show right. at the Bourbon Room. So she was the headliner for the show. So what they do is they, you know, a headliner can call up comics, friends, whatever, and be like, hey, you want to jump on this show? Do some stage time, you know, 
You're more than welcome to. So I, I jumped on at this show. It was a great show, really fun. You're telling this amazing, like, vulnerable story about your father and, and losing him to Alzheimer's and making it funny and also educational. You asked the audience, like, who has dealt with Alzheimer's? This woman chimed in. She was like, I, I dealt with it for, I think, like 17 years with my yeah. mom. And you guys were sharing stories. And it was just kind of cool because you never see, like, I don't want to call it crowd work, but it was crowd work with someone dealing with a horrible, you know, debilitating disease like right. Alzheimer's. But you made it funny and you were t being very personal and turning it into very, like, clever, witty jokes. And we had this show from 7 to 9. Mm -hmm. I remember it being 8.55. And this guy um, from the show afterwards called Stamp Town, Stamp Town Live or whatever. Um, I don't remember his name. Zach. Zucker. Zach Zucker. Sure. Barrels through the bourbon room. And she's got five minutes left of her set. She's been lit. She's wrapping up a story. Um, and this guy, Zach Zucker, bolts in and says, get the fuck off the stage. <laughs> Wrap this shit up. You're 30 minutes over. Get the fuck out of here. And we're all like, what? Like, we're all watching the show, you know, the openers of the show. We're all sitting together, Crystal and Lee and... Uh, um, uh, Katie, Katie, we're all just yeah. kind of sitting there like, what the fuck? And the audience is like, Bleh! like, it was so shocking and jarring. And he's like, you're 30 minutes over. And you just coolly and calmly were like, actually, I have this space till nine o'clock. And I, that's when I looked at my watch and I'm like, it's 855. She's totally in the right. He has a big trunk of shit that he's bringing in because he's got to rely on props. <laughs> <laughs> like fucking Carrot Top. <laughs> Who's amazing, by the way. Yeah. Comes in and just huffs and puffs. He's knocking into chairs. He opens one of the doors to the bourbon room backstage, slams it, starts putting everything like, Ugh, and people in the audience are like, oh my God. I think I remember hearing someone just being like, oh my God. <laughs> so I'm stunned. We all kind of look at each other and we're like, we we got to go get him. And so <laughs> the girls get up and beeline it. And I'm like, well, they've got this. And then I'm like, no, you know what? I got to go too. <laughs> and I'm tall, 6'4". I can be a little like, Ugh. <laughs> So I did my best scared straight and went back there. And I was like, what is wrong with you? I mean, I said a lot of other things. Oh, I didn't too. know you went back there. Oh, I went back there. And I go, what the fuck is your problem? He's like, I don't fucking know you, bro. And I'm like, mm, if there's one thing I hate. It's being called bro. <laughs> <laughs> don't bro me. Don't bro me. None of that. I don't know you. And what right. you just did was so insulting and unprofessional. And he says, you're supposed to be fucking done. And I go, okay. And I looked at him and I said, so would you have done this same thing had this been Dave Chappelle, Bill Burr? Or any John man. John Mulaney. No, you did this to a woman on stage by herself. Period. And he walked by me. He checked my shoulder. He like did that like little bitch move where he just oh. checked my shoulder. And I've never just wanted to just snatch someone and <laughs> grab them and shake them. You could have because you're so much uh -huh. taller. Oh, than I could have just. <laughs> you're done. And you finished your set like a complete pro. Walked backstage grabbed me, started crying, and you were like, you know, I, you were just like, you just try to do something so great and you have some asshole like this, you know, ruin it. And I mean, we did everything. I talked to the owners of the bourbon room. They were like, we're so sorry. And I'm like, yeah, just don't book this guy ever again. He's a piece of shit. I've never experienced anything like that. And you and Anything. I, we burned down a club. We have burned down a club. Like, we've been through <laughs> real, yeah. real things. Yeah. And out of all the comedians who were there, yeah. everyone said, like, and Katie, who owns a club now, all have said, this is the craziest thing that you've ever seen on stage. And maybe, save for the fact that Lori Kilmartin had a bread roll thrown at her head, which I think today takes a cake for craziness that mm -hmm. happens on stage. Mm -hmm. But as far as, like, disrespectful... And, and take away even, we don't have to spend too much time on this because there's yeah. so much more other fun shit. Yeah. But take away the level of success, meaning me comparative to Dave Chappelle. 
take that away. Any performer doing anything on stage, if you're another performer in the room, regardless of what you think the situation is, just have some respect. Yeah. And oh my God, a comic's never gone over before. You've never, like, right. and he wasn't supposed to start until 9.45. Right, and I had you until need- nine. Yeah. And I, when I got to you, it was, when I, I looked at my watch when I got off backstage, it was 8.59, it literally went to nine. Yeah. And I just was like, this is so, the, the thing that was so frustrating for me was that, I've been trying to work and and formulate this Alzheimer's chunk of my comedy because I'm planning on doing something with it. Mm -hmm. And Seth Rogen's foundation was there, Hilarity for Charity. Him and his wife's foundation, Laura Rogen, her mother has Alzheimer's, been dealing with it for a long time, and I do work with them. And his team came to check me out. And this little prick— couldn't hold it in. It would. It told me mother so much sucker. about him. Mother sucker. <laughs> Zach, mother sucker. Take your circus someplace else because you don't belong in this industry. If that's how you treat anyone on stage, like especially a woman, especially like I've never seen another comic do that before. No, like ever. Like oh my god, so and so's running late. Like okay. You're going to be fine. Right. Like, did And he you... was stomping around in the lobby and, and yelling at the staff and yelling at the owner. I'm like, what are you doing? I think his mom forgot to put in his favorite juice box. Well, in we his did lunch. find out something. What? Tell least... me, tell me, tell me everything. <laughs> so <laughs> I heard that he was not officially invited to the festival. I heard that his, his parents mommy bought... and daddy bought him into the festival. Mm-hmm. So I heard the there same thing. You go. That explains everything. Entitled little white boy yes. shit. And as, as they say in the South, Bless his heart. Bless his heart. <laughs> Bless his heart. Well, we've already dragged you through on two podcasts, so. Well, good. I mean, I, I, I that's what I told him. I was like, you have people from the Laugh Factory, the Improv, Levity. Netflix. 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 Co- bourbon. The- like, you, you fucked up. You fucked it. I'm fucked up. Yep. Good luck. Wish you the best. What's happening in the world? Is uh, Gary Busey well, melting? Our government is officially <laughs> close. Um, I don't really like bringing up politics on this podcast, but I, I just had to do this because our government has officially turned into Jerry Springer. Oh, you talk. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. I'm so Which excited. one? Well, I, the the majory, uh, Mar- Majory? <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Queef? Yes, her. Marjorie um, and, and AOC. AOC. Oh my God, and, baby girl. Oh, Are we uh, supposed to even say that? Like, yeah. In Congress? Baby girl? Baby girl. Oh, well, the this is what has everyone going off is that over the weekend Marjorie Taylor Queef hold for open <laughs> wasn't that dramatic? there you go okay. um went off um the rails as she does and went after uh one of the uh what Repu- are they the Rep- congresswomen from Texas right Republican yeah well she's Marjorie Taylor Green mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. and so they were kind of like her name's Jasmine Crockett, and she's fierce. I love her. Love her. Um, and she goes after her, like, fake eyelashes. She's like, well, maybe you can't see because of all those, you know, those fake eyelashes. To which point, <laughs> Miss Crockett went into an alliteration fever dream where she calls Marjorie <laughs> Taylor Greene a bleach, blonde, bad-built, butch body. And a gust of wind hit me like no other. It was the like a like a rainbow dove flew off to really kick off Pride Month. By the way, when I was single, that was exactly what my profile said. I I was like, I know I've heard this yeah. before. So I would like to go on the record and say I was plagiarized yeah. by this woman. Well, as a copywriter yourself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but what happened was the internet took what she said and, of course, turns it into a masterpiece. <laughs> we have remixes here. Stop. This is the B6 AOC remix. I mean, if this is not the song of the summer, I mean, everything. We are now just taking clips from real life and turning them into songs. There was one about the, there's that one girl, she's like, I want a guy in finance. It's gone everywhere. <laughs> like, all you gotta do is just say five lines on TikTok and people, I'm sure someone will listen to this podcast yes, and be like, and turn it into something. And, turn it, and God bless, I hope they do. But AOC was like, oh girl, 
baby girl. Baby girl, don't even. Don't even play. Baby, she, she was like, oh, yes. you could hear everything clicking and clacking. Yeah. It was like lunch in, in it, high school. It was everything. And I have never howled more. The guys <laughs> who were like calling order to the room, one guy's just like, did she just say bleach blonde, bad built, butch body? And he's like... I was like that. That was like some improv right there. The alliteration, the bees, the and then you, yeah, you see her because I've always thought that Marjorie Taylor Greene looked like Vigo the Carpathian from Ghostbusters too. Oh God, in the painting. Yes. He, she, he, she does. Yeah, she really does. Yeah, I'm Vigo the Carpathian. You're like okay, <laughs> and you will now only see Marjorie Taylor Greene as Vigo the Destroyer. Vigo the Carpathian. <laughs> That's such a yep. great reference. That's a mm -hmm. deep cut. I feel like not deep everyone's going to get it, but the ones who do are the real ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, look. Oh, God. <laughs> she needs to that fix is her a, ropes. That's a bleach blonde, bad built butch body right there. <laughs> it's so similar. It's very it's similar. It's very, very similar. And it's weird, too, because ever since Vigo left the painting, everyone's wondered where he's been. He hasn't and been he's back. clearly a, a representative from Georgia. It's also really similar to the new um, Prince painting that they have. Yes. I even compared that uh, King Charles. King Charles, I yes. mean. Yeah, it looks just like the new King Charles yep. painting. Covered in blood. Yeah, it's a little demonic. Yeah, What's it is happening weird. with the world? We've got we've got Aurora oh. Borealis in the uh -huh. wrong part, the wrong time. Solar flares. Solar flares, solar storms. Uh -huh. This is insane. Yep. By the way, that's what the inside of my womb looks like once a month. Like a scary old man covered in tomato At sauce? 100, 122%. Everyone says 100%. I'm going to say 122%. That's fine. It's your, I think it's your number. unique. Yeah. This is like, I, I felt like they made this portrait the way it is so that art uh, protesters could throw tomato sauce on it and it would be okay. <laughs> that's, that's great. She's on stage. Yeah, they're just like... <laughs> Go ahead and try and try it, bitch. blood this painting. Oh God, I'm going to just I'm going to protest a painting. By, by a the a, a painting. It's so terrifying. It's so stupid. It is intense. Um, I do have to clarify. We did just nonchalantly throw out that we burned down a cl uh, a club. Oh, that's um, right, we did. But we do have to to clarify that we did. Burn down a club. <laughs> <laughs> Clarified. Next topic. We were in Dallas and we went to this bar after one of our shows. I think it was the show where all the like women of Dallas were jumping Wait, on my body. If we we can't you can't <laughs> skim over the <laughs> go, 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 go. You and I do a set the Addison Improv. Yeah. Lala Kiki was Lala Kiki. Lala Kiki was Lala Kiki. There's a manager there. Any comic who's played this room knows what Lala Kiki is. I remember when he came up to me and he's like, all right, Lala Kiki. And I was like, <laughs> I looked at you and my face was just like, did he just say Lala Kiki? Like we're at the haunted like tiki room at Disneyland. <laughs> Lala Kiki. Lala Kiki. Kiki la Sometimes they'll throw a Kiki Lala at you. Kiki Lala. And you're like, oh no, Kiki Lala. Yeah. So we do the thing, we do the show, and across the halls is little, is it a piano bar or something? It was a piano yeah. bar. Uh, it was uh, Howl at the Moon. It was like a dueling piano bar. You got up and sang, honey. Sure did. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> I wish we could remember the song. Yeah, I want to no. say it was a Janis Joplin, Bobby McGee. No, I would never sing Bobby McGee. Are you sure? Do you know what you were drinking that night? You were drinking like a straight guy. <laughs> Scared straight. <laughs> scared straight. Justin got scared straight in, in Texas. Addison, Texas. And, the and I'm going back again. <laughs> to set the record straight. I mean crooked. I mean gay. Can you set a record gay? So we're in there. You're up on stage having fun. And there's this group of women who are either perimenopausal or there's a really late baby shower. I don't know what one it was. <laughs> Yeah. It was a reveal. We don't know what was being revealed. Either dryness or yeah. a bump. Oh, they all <laughs> went full feral. <laughs> they did. Just... So they, one of them came up to me, I remember this, and asked if you were my husband. Yeah. And I said, 122%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish nothing more. I love him, and he loves me And we don't sexually. have sex. <laughs> yes, he's my husband. Whenever I try to get him in the mood, he always just palms my face and says, get away from me, Banshee. I think that means he's really into me. <laughs> and so these women... Go back to your haunted tree. <laughs> womb. By the way, haunted womb will not be at Coachella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So then what happens, I can only equate to something that happens in nature. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure what species. It might be like a meerkat or maybe a prairie dog. When the male, there's one male in the area, and all the women sort of surround him and create this stone hedge structure around the the, the male that's in the center. Mm -hmm. And they all proceed to dry hump <laughs> and climb you. <laughs> To be the one that gets chosen to mate it with. It was nature's metal. It was. <laughs> it, I have a photo of you. Photos. So anybody in the chat, any fans who want me to DM them the photos, just hit me up. Jesse, you may I want to know how many people hit you up. <laughs> Just Show comedy us the Gmail. picture. I grab this one woman and I am flinging her around. By the leg. <laughs> Justin Martindale. By, he grabs her like this. I have a photo of his hand under her leg and he's like. <laughs> and she was like, this is the best night of my life. And this woman's like, oh, he is just so sexy. And I'm like, oh, and also very gay. But I said it in my heart, not out loud. Because uh -huh. I wanted her to have her moment. Yeah, I think it was her birthday, too. Yeah, and I think she, you gave Stella her groove back. You should be hired to do this, Justin. You should be hired. It's safe for everyone. The dam broke for the first time in years. <laughs> <laughs> the levee didn't hold. The grasslands are now the wetlands, Simba. The zebras bowed for the first Kaka! time that night. Kaka! Rafiki. Can you feel? Rafiki grabbed baby Simba underneath the leg. The <laughs> oh, God. But you yes, we, and then we the went to a bar back. afterwards. Oh, that's right. So then that's the, <sighs> that is the precursor to us setting something yes. on fire. We went to this bar. They introduced uh, introduced introduced us to picklebacks. <gasps> oh, that's yes. right. Pickle they were like, backs. we got picklebacks. We were like, this is new and fun. It's just a way to binge drink without yeah. any burn. Sure. Slam and it back feels good. We ran into Mulan. That was the one, the the drag queen we saw, who was fantastic. Who's still killing it to this day. M Mulan's one of the greatest drag queens I've ever seen in my life. Sensational. She makes me question my femininity. Same. The way she slams her clam on the ground when she does that split. <laughs> Not slams her clam. <laughs> As it came out, I wish I hadn't said it. <laughs> it's fine. It's good. It's good. Uh, She's so feminine so good. and beautiful. So good. So a beautiful show going on. Bunch of drag queens. Oh, yeah. wait, 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 wait. What? Do you remember? <laughs> what? We didn't have money. <laughs> what? We didn't have money. Oh, right. I lost we my wallet. <laughs> we didn't have any money. We, we were poor. <laughs> we called some to Venmo us. Yeah. Who did we call? I don't remember. I lost my wallet on an air on the airplane. You did. Yeah. And I was like, and, and it we're was like, let's go out and, and <laughs> so someone will take care of us. I'll buy a shit. I don't know why I didn't have my money. I don't either. But we we didn't have any money. How did we pay? Someone I don't know. sent us I money. Think somebody sent us money and someone bought us <laughs> drinks because they felt bad for us. And then we used other people's money to throw ones at the drag queen. Sure did. <laughs> yeah. Because we could have held on to it. And used it for like a <laughs> breakfast taco or something. No, no, We're no. like, thanks guys. <laughs> we gotta help the poor. <laughs> this drag queen who's doing A-OK -okay without yeah, us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's doing just uh, fine. Oh, and then we left the next day, or we left that night. We said goodbye to the staff. We uh, were like, "Thank you, guys." And then we the shut next the club day, down. Shut the club down. We, they shut. They let. They forced they told us, us to, leave. to leave. They were like, the "You have no money. On. You have no money." You're People poor. were mopping. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And then the <laughs> next morning, they were like, famous gay bar in Dallas, Texas, burned to the ground overnight. We were like, did we leave a candle on? What did we do? What was the name of this club? I don't remember. It was in, it was in San, was it San Antonio? No, it was it, Dallas. It was Dallas? It was like Dallas, Addison, something like that. You sure? Was it Plano? We did like a little Texas run. It was like, yeah. we didn't do a San Antonio because we would have known that. And we you. were like, I remember seeing the news that morning. Like someone sent me uh, the. It was like, like 2017. The Rainbow Lounge. That was it. The Rainbow Lounge. Accidental fire destroys four weeks. <laughs> Rainbow Did Lounge. Did anyone die? <laughs> Fort Worth. Fort Worth. It was Fort it Worth. It was Fort Worth. Look. Oh, and it was right. yeah. destroyed. The fire was declared under control after 4 a.m. We had just left. Oh my God. We definitely set the fire. 
Firefighters said eight trucks responded to a call about the fire just after 3 a.m. and noticed uh, the roof sagging. We shortly. missed, oh well, my roof sags every week. Well, stop <laughs> slamming your clam, girl. <laughs> I'm so sad we missed all those firefighters, those Fort Worth firefighters. Well, like, what would we have done? I don't know. Ask yeah. them to pay our tab. They probably get it for free. Y'all got Venmo? Hey, I can't help us out. We got picklebacks. We owe the bar. God. So that was our that was our burning the club down story. <laughs> God. All right. Let's get back into okay. it. Here we go. So this guy, Martin Neumeyer, is a German politician and FDP candidate. He was seen licking a public toilet, <laughs> applying feces on his face to make a Hitler-like mustache in bizarre videos. So this guy, uh, multiple videos are going viral on social media, allegedly showing the German politician, Martin Neumeier, licking public toilets. Um, uh, he's also heard saying that the licking of toilets was part of his, quote, punishment. However, he did not share more details. In another video, which has been deleted, the German politician is seen making a mustache from feces. They spelled well, feces wrong. Of course they did. They spelled feces this, wrong. This is journalism now. We don't even spell check anything. Oh, While role-playing uh, as Adolf Hitler, Martin Neumeier also shared videos of himself where he is seen performing sexual acts online while singing the Nazi-era German national anthem. This is giving... Mental illness? Black Mirror. Like everything. Season just, opener. Yeah. Remember the pig? Oh, the pig. You know what? What? I want to say this. Black Mirror, one of the best shows on television. I agree. Every, you can watch any episode. Any There's season. no order, but people got the worst um, sell of the show because of the pig. And that's the very first episode. Yeah. And I'm like, have you guys seen Black Mirror? And they're like, oh, I've heard about the pig and the politician. And I'm like, you just got to get over that hump. Get over the hump. You just but have to get over the hump. That's where we are now. Like, our. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, is, look at this video. Black Mirror is basically. Um, that's a politician. That's a politician. He looks like an AI. Is this yeah. even real? See, this is my thing. I don't even know what's real. Mm. God, those are nice urinals. Mm -hmm. Those are German. Oh, God. I can't. Is it. No, 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 no. Is it showing it? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, God! No, 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 no! Uh, he must have done something really bad. This feels like, this feels ooh, like mafia. Ooh, look. I can't. Oh. Uh, uh. Ooh, get it all, get it all, Daddy. Oh, yeah. Ooh, oh my gosh! Oh, no, yeah. I don't even like to hold the door Ooh, handles. Someone, I use the napkin. Someone went to a crawfish boil. <laughs> oh, oh, he's licking the. No, no, no! <laughs> he's licking the toilet brush. I'm sorry. He looks like a he spelunks that jacket. Is it over? Mm -hmm. it's over yeah. Oh my gosh! I don't know what th that is. That's not normal. He he must owe somebody something. Or well, it's weirdly enough, he just got cast on The Mass Singer as the toilet brush. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet brush? You make me feel like a teenage dream. <laughs> Ain't God. no sunshine when she's gone. I mean, let's think about this. Uh, we just, I think we need to like... Spell feces, right? Do like do a talent competition, you know, with our, our leaders. Because I feel like everything's now just a reality show. Katy Perry just left American Idol. But I heard that on the way over here... She said, keep the seat warm if I decide to come back. She did seven seasons of American Idol. Can you name the past seven winners? Nope. No. Can't either. Can't uh, Kelly you. Clarkson. N Carrie Season Underwood. One. The guy with the guy who liked cats and had red hair. <laughs> and then became a real estate agent. Oh, that one. Clay Aiken. Clay Aiken. <laughs> Brian knew? Yeah. yeah. Baldinger knew? Yeah. Well, I mean... <laughs> Clearly, he's not a. Uh, uh, what was it? What was the other one? Oh, Justin Marini, <laughs> <laughs> with the curly hair. Guarini, same, same, same thing. Um, but uh, she just left America. Now we have a new winner. Um, good no, luck. We don't know who it is. Abby Carter. That's her. Season twenty-two. Oh, yeah. white girl number so twenty-two. The, I mean, I don't know any of these people. She looks very basic. Good, good for, for her. Them. Good for her. Hope it works out. Abby, spelled A B I. I, yep. it's, it, that looks like a fake name. Doesn't mm -hmm. none of it feels real. It all feels fake. We probably should have just like a talent contest at this point. What does <sighs> it matter? No what one's paying attention. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares where our tax dollars um, go. Oh, this woman. Oh gosh. Did you hear about this portal? Yeah, don't we just have cell phones? Like, why do we need a portal? It's just Isn't something FaceTime to keep... a portal to everywhere? <laughs> yeah. 
Fair. Yeah, they just had this camera and then built a, a Doctor Strange portal. We're so fucking stupid. Stupid. Yeah, it was like VHS. Yeah, they were like, we have a portal. You're just FaceTiming another country. Wait, is this a portal or did somebody chisel this in stone? It's just an it's it's just an art installation. It's us being so bored. Why don't we cure cancer? No, we need portals that people can see. Another Dublin, country. We need to recreate the technology that already exists, make mm -hmm. it more antiquated, mm -hmm. and call it new. But what did I think was going to happen? So this woman got this portal shut down. It was in New York. Oh, um, and you could see, I'm sure everybody's like heard about this. So you could see people in Dublin, and Dublin can see people in New York. And people were like getting a little crazy with it. Um, the And why what, Dublin? I don't I mean, know. Actually, I have no idea. Um, does anyone know why Dublin? I don't know. It's a, it's like, why not like someplace more beautiful? Not that, you know, Dublin isn't beautiful, but like a beach with some water. Something tropical. Yeah, maybe we just watch whales. <sighs> you, know, you know what they should have done? Just put the screensaver that's on your your TV when you let your TV go chill for a while yeah. and just like the fish swim by. Just to relax. Yeah, just we don't to need, chill out. Well, what do they think that people were going to do? So people were, of course, getting inappropriate. They're flipping off everybody. <laughs> Someone took a picture of the Twin Towers and showed it oh to the gosh. New Yorkers. And then this woman, some call her a hero, some villainize her. You decide. She says, you know what? Here's my tits. I'm going to show you my Twin oh, Towers right here. She did titties. She, she showed her, her Tower 1 and Tower 2. And they shut the portal down. Well, my boobs definitely look like Twin Towers. One went down a little bit sooner than the other. That was t Tower 7. Yep. Yeah. I got a Tower yeah. 7 and a Tower 2. Yeah, that's fine. It's it's 41. Yeah, it's okay. It's normal. But, so uh, people are mad at this girl for so doing... So they're mad at her because she showed her tits to uh, the portal people of Dublin. And they shut down the portal. And everyone's like, man, you ruined all the fun. Well, she's an OnlyFans model. And since the portal was shut down, she said she's made over $10,000 in revenue of people like subscribing to That's her. That's some budget ditties. Only yeah. 10 grand? Yikes. Ouch. <laughs> Better add a couple zeros for mine. I'm not even on the dang site. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's You can her. email me the money at justinmaypalusocomedy at gmail.com. I'll show you them through a portal. <laughs> it's going to be a portal that my nephew drew. And it's not going to be titties because that's inappropriate. It's going to be eggs, but you'll think it's titties. <laughs> It'll be Eric Nephew, not Eric Nephew. <laughs> Eric Nephew. Good callback. Justin Martindale. Just saying. You have a light. <laughs> <laughs> you look so cute. I love the light. Um. So good news, everyone. The portal is back up and running as of today. So, Can't wait to see what people show now. I know. Like, Move over. From the makers of titties comes bunghole. Comes homeless foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I titties mean. were bad. Get ready for some Gouda gout. <laughs> that homeless foreskin. And there's so, I mean... I just love how uh, homeless people really show everything. All of a really sudden, a German chancellor's like, did someone say homeless <laughs> foreskin? <laughs> I can't I handle you live commenting the urinal lick. Yeah. That's like, that's a that's an Olympic sport. Thank you. Watch and he's out, going Leslie in. Jones. <laughs> I'm coming for you. Watch out, Snoop and Kevin um, Hart. Well, we're going to go from licking toilets to bare feet because Kelly Clarkson, I had no idea. I love her. I had no idea. I love her too. I love her. I love her. She's love my her, original. Love her, love her, original. Love her, love her. She's on something similar to Ozempic. Is it? Oh fuck it. She's on something. She admitted to Whoopi Goldberg last week. She's like, I, I yeah, Ozempic. I'm not on it, but I'm on something like it. Just say you're on it. Well, we think Land and I think that she is holding off because she's got a deal with them. With Ozempic. Yeah. No, no, no. With whatever. The, oh. She hasn't said it yet because she's going to be like the spokesperson for it. Um, Is it just walking? No. Okay. Got it. No, got no, it. no, no. But this came out that her barefoot habit causes tension behind the scenes of the talk show. <laughs> 
And so... <laughs> barefoot habit. Listen to this. According to a sensational report, insiders complain the country singer, okay, pop as well, turned talk show host's barefoot <laughs> habit has quickly become off-putting to those around her due to her stinky feet. Oh, no. No. I know. Kelly's barefoot habit has become a hot topic behind the scenes. It's literally hot. Jeez. Oh, I know. The insider went on to explain it's not just about hygiene. It's about maintaining a certain image. Look, she is a Texas girl. She likes her... She She's very laid back. She is a barefoot contesta. Yeah. Literally. Maybe they they could use, you know, like my mom used to have on the outside of our pool, we had an above ground pool and a ladder Mm -hmm. and the ladder would be in the yard and she had a little bucket of water to wash off the leaves and the grass so they didn't enter the pool. Right. Maybe they need buckets of talc powder. (laughs) Talc powder. So she's just just chalky feet. Yeah, little buckets of baby Mm -hmm. powder so Mm -hmm. she can go dip her feet in. I mean, I don't know. And they can keep track of her. Her Footsteps are everywhere. I get really nervous around my bare feet because I'm just, I, that, like, You've never smelled. I know. In your life. Thanks. You have literal, as far as a a platonic closeness we have, never smelled you. Thanks. Never smelled you. It's always, like, scent and. Yeah, you have, like, a great odor. Thank you. Yes, it's not anything off-putting. I mean, Kelly's. Off-footing. Off-footing. God. (laughs) (laughs) Wait. But since Kelly's, <laughs> since Kelly Clarkson's shoes have been gone, <laughs> shoes have been gone. gone. <laughs> My feet smell. She needs to break away from this bad habit and maybe put on a shoe or two. She or wants to be laid back. Everyone can just f off because mm-hmm. uh, it's not the rest of the office's show. It's the Kelly Clarkson show. It is. The and Kelly guess Clarkson what? Show. You reach a certain level where I don't want to have my motherfucking shoes on. Thank you. I've worked really hard. But also, I want to oh, find out neck. who leaked this story. Oh, that's true. Like, uh, who the fuck is talking about my bare feet? Her assistant. Behind these hazel feet. <laughs> um, <laughs> What's the stronger one? <laughs> what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Take my shoes off, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I think Kelly's taking her shoes off, and she's like, if it's not going to kill you, it's going to make you stronger. Do you think she should put her shoes back on? No, right? it's her show. It's Who her gives show. a shit? You know what you can't do? Sing like Kelly Clarkson. No, you can't. So hush she... your mouth, take your check, and go home. Yeah, she's just, she's there. She seems like she's a decent person. She's fun. She's down to earth. She's not a placator. I like her. I do, too. I like her. I'm here. You know what? And... I'm sure there's a German chancellor out there who would love the chance oh, God, to, lick to the toes. smell Kelly's feet. She should have a foot cam, and that should be a direct live feed to her that should be only fans. That should be the portal. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never liked a shoe cam. Really? No. Are you sure? Yeah. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Like the on the red carpet? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just saying like a general shoe. Oh cam. no, like I don't when know they did it on the thing. when they did it on like a red carpet, they're like, all right, put your foot in the box. And it was Ew. like this weird, like they did that for people like a while ago. Yeah. They, and so tell us about your shoes. And you just have like a celebrity's toes. And I'm like, oh, this oh, is too no. dark. I don't trust my Have you bones. been on Only Feet or whatever it's called? Wiki feet? Sure. Only feet. Whatever. I would do only feet. If it were just that, just feet. Is that what it is for girls? Because I feel like guys, I I don't understand feet at all. Wiki feet, I think, is for everybody. What's your ranking on Wiki feet? I think it's like a nine. Good for you. Thank you. That's good, right? Yeah, I think it is. (laughs) Well, this was years ago, and then now there's a new bunion in town. (laughs) Now you got Velociraptor claws. Yeah, and now I got gargoyle. One foot's a gargoyle. (laughs) One's got a bone that I'm not sure where it came from. It. it, You just turn a certain age, and things start accumulating in little pockets. I call them my charcuterie pockets. Yes. Yeah. Just the a, cheese goes someplace. It has to. It's got to go. Just throw it next to the cranberries and apricots. Yeah, on, right on my foot knuckle. Ugh. We'll call it a knuckle. Ugh. It's a baby head. They did the bubopsy. They did the did the What is happening? What is that? I don't know what's happening. From, from my big fat Greek wedding. Oh, I, you, I have never I, seen that. Are you serious? Oh, Come on. Oh, you hate her. You're such a hater of straight cinema. <laughs> I am a straight oh, ally. Oh, no, Justin, you have a knit doll? No, this is not me, but thank you. <laughs> this was a woman who knitted Jesus. a life-size doll that looks like Jason Momoa. <laughs> Talk about smell. 
because she missed her boyfriend so much. So she sold it for $300 and now more women want their own. See, this is where I don't believe there are any accidents. I believe all trauma and mm -hmm. things that go on in the world result in something positive. This woman found a business. She did. And you know what? I have to give her props because so many people now are making like robots and like life-size sex dolls. Yeah, and, they walk like this. Yeah, and they've got like like fleshy lips and can talk now. Those are the this Kardashians. Woman, How dare you? Uh, fair. Fair enough. <laughs> but this woman went to Joanne's Fabrics and knitted a life-size Jason Momoa doll, which... Her name is Gail Lynn Bargery from Springfield, Ohio. Of course it is. She crocheted a lookalike of her boyfriend, including his private parts, to keep her company when he wasn't sleeping over at her place. What'd she do with that? Wait, so, so having adopted a freestyle approach to the design, she said the end result resembled Jason Momoa. So she was making her boyfriend into a doll. Did he which die? Which is not creepy. No. Where's her boyfriend? Like, why is he gone? I don't know. She says, I didn't live with my boyfriend, so I said to him as a joke that I will crochet a replica of him to snuggle with on the nights that he isn't with me. But then gradually it went from turning into her boyfriend to Jason Momoa, and that's that's him. Girl, there's some things we have to keep inside. Thank you. There's some things. Darkness. That should have been a journal entry. Yeah. Like, this is one hobby maybe we shouldn't have sought out. I'm here for crocheting, but Jason Momoa is like 6'7". Mm-hmm. 142,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. And he wears metal hats and he's in a band with Jack Black right now. And he wears like a loincloth. A loincloth, yeah. which is a sack. <laughs> Not the breath. <laughs> <laughs> loincloth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you... Don't you dare! <laughs> you... <laughs> you don't know what I'm going to say. I what? The crochet is kind of cute. No, no, okay, no, no. Okay, no. What, what are you going to say? I was going to say, would you have a crochet doll of David Bautista? Uh, I don't think there's enough yarn in the world. Because you and David Bautista became friends. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that... Oh, God! Not the crochet nuts! This show... <laughs> this show needs to come with a Surgeon General warning. My poor eyes. It's just yarn. <laughs> is it? Because it looks... Eerily familiar to my man's. <laughs> well, that was the point. She did great then. She did a great job. She's but an I'm artist. Not, I did not. She's need an to, artist. I didn't need to see okay, those. Okay, we need to talk to her about her boyfriend. I know. Because she's like, this is my boyfriend. Isn't he hot? I'm like, first of all. Wicked Witch is a bit I, east. Girl, you were trapped in Middle Earth. A portal opened and sucked you in. You were with Gandalf's second cousin. <laughs> Who's the guy from, from, oh. from Harry Potter? The, uh, Hagrid. The, yeah. Hagrid? It's giving Hagrid it's realness. It's giving Hagrid. It's giving your wizard Harry realness. Not her posing <laughs> like he's on edibles. Uh, oh. Okay, beach cover up. Come through, Starfish. Starfish is working hard. <laughs> Poor Starfish. It's just like, why? Well, I, I, I've lived too long. I cheat death every day, and now I'm on this, like, yarn ball. No oh, pun intended. No. Oh, no. He's got legs like... <laughs> I'm not going to say it. There's some things. Okay, what? Gail Lynn Bargery, some things don't need to be said. I just censored myself. I think your man's femurs have grown <laughs> inverted. <laughs> I'm concerned that her boyfriend is inside of this doll. Because mm. there was like stories years ago about some woman who taxidermied her husband, I think, at home. Did it herself and oh, then set him up at the table. I love more than a strong woman who puts her dead husband in the walls. Yeah, you just want to hang on to the walls. Yeah. Was yeah. that so wrong? I mean, who was the who was the woman in Paris is burning? Dorian Corey. Dorian Corey. <gasps> All right, we have a couple more stories. This is about a, a greasy monumental ritual at the Naval Academy ends after more than two hours. Oh, Jesus. So in Annapolis, it took the Naval Academy plebes two hours, 19 minutes, and 11 seconds to accomplish the ultimate in upward mobility, scaling a greasy obelisk and swapping out a cup with a cap this year with an unusual hitch. The annual grueling slippery ritual marked the completion of the plebe year ended with a 20-year-old Californian Ben Lysigang, what? Standing victorious on the shoulders of scores of classmates and placing an upperclassman's hat atop the Herndon Monument. So... This is like a tradition. The class of 2027 worked together to scale the 21-foot 
obelisk covered in vegetable shortening to oh, replace God. a plebe Dixie cup, a white canvas to <sighs> sailor's hat with an upturned rim with the upperclassmen's more formal hat. So there's about 1,300 of these people climbing this thing to put a hat on top of a obelisk. Oh, and this... I mean, oh, I mean, I'm looking at this picture now and then imagining it with tiki torches in the future. I thought that too, but then it looks a little, <laughs> at least that one photo looked pretty inclusive. I was surprised. I was going to say it's giving tiki torches, but it seems to be an inclusive school. Also, it just looks like... Like a ritual? Mm. Looks like an Ari Aster film? It looks like a Sean Cody casting couch. It's giving M. Night Shyamalan. It's Shyamalan. Bless you. <laughs> Shyamalan. How dare you? This is what happens when we're on our phones for two years. Then we try to go back out in life in life. Yeah. This is us lifing after being on our, on our cell phones so much. I just feel like it's a lot of just unnecessary grabbing and touching. like it, Homoerotica, a, very really. Very homoerotic. Very like, oh, I've never done this before vibes. Let's go grease up a statue mm -hmm. and get on top of it. What? Mm -hmm. Where are we doing that? By the way, who provided the shortening? Oh. A creepy janitor. <laughs> you guys need some extra shortening for I'm, the obelisk? I've been looking for something to use all this for. I've been collecting it. And it's weird because it lasted this long. And after they all left, there was a camera that was still recording. And weirdly enough, the German chancellor came out from behind and started licking the obelisk. Oh, look at that. Look at all that sweet, no, that I, sweet, I, sweet shortening. It's all that just boy weird. shortening on that big obelisk. Get your fat ass over here, boy. <laughs> you sound like the guy from. <laughs> I got some pop popsicles in my basement. We got all. We got walnuts, peanuts, pistachios. Come on, oh look all at kinds that. of nuts. Oh yeah, it's just a big old obelisk made of stone. Please you climb up there without a shirt on and your wet shorts. Come on down. I'm gonna make you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you keep I'm going. Make your mouth a sloppy Joe. <laughs> I'm glad they're having fun outside. Yeah, at least yeah. This is so, a, this is the alternative to an iPad. Well, and also like, couldn't you guys just get like a like a a crocodile mile or something? Yeah, like a little slip and slide. Something. Get a shower curtain. Yeah, like do people do slip and slides anymore? Hell yeah. I Did blasted you? through a couple a few years ago. But there was always like a hidden sprinkler head underneath. Like, oh, yeah. The there yeah a I yard mean, rock. Yeah. You'd just, hit a yard rock and then you were speaking wrong for the rest of your life. Absolutely. But so much fun. So much fun. So and it felt it. like in the commercial, it went on like the slip and slide was like two miles long. And mm -hmm. then you got it and it was about two feet wide. Mm -hmm. So you'd slide off that sucker right into the grass. And then get grass all over you. Yes. Then you're itching. And then you get back on it. And then the whole thing's just covered in grass and Hot water. Hot mess express. Yeah. But that was what we were, that was our babysitter. Mm -hmm. I was babysat by a slip and slide. That makes sense. Another sound bite for you. Add it to the board. Yeah. <laughs> Put a pan in it. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> all right. Oh, God. We have an app for everything mm -mm, these mm -mm, days, mm -mm, from dating apps mm -mm. to delivery apps. Now, mm -mm. Jesse, nope. I don't know if you knew this or not, but there is now a Cunnilingus app. A who? A, a digital vulva. Okay, first and foremost, my vulva is never meant to be digital. That's the that's the problem. We're trying to digitize things that are not meant to be digital. Well, also these are dorks. These are incels. This is dangerous. Dorks, really? I don't know. I'm just well, look saying at this guy. Certainly. Could you imagine? No, I don't want imagine to. Imagine you're on a date with this. Like, that's not how it works. I'm gay and I know how this works. More on that at 11. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dying. There's Stay a hole in my weather throat. weather in Tempe. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's hot because something's burning. But look, like, could you, I could not imagine. Say you're on a date with this guy. Do and I have he's to? been training for this. Oh, God. But the date's gone well. And he invites you over, you know, for like a coffee or another cocktail or whatever at his house. You guys are vibing. And then you kind of get a little hot and heavy. And then all of a sudden, it's like dance, dance, tongue revolution on like your digital thing. vulva. Is there team players on this app? Can we take this to Dave and Buster's? Um, don't ask. That's the last thing I need to see. Is uh, you got any more tokens for the vaginal app? Like no. Just a huge giant screen. You never do that to me, Harold. Do like, we know who the app maker is? Is this another Chinese app? Probably uh, Algo. Is it Algo? I'm curious to know who created I'll go this. Algo. Away from this. Look. Yeah, I'll go I love home. that the comments say like, "Can you go back down? Are there in-app purchases like for butthole?" 
There's Stop no hope. It. Let the meteor come. Let the meteor come. Let the thing come at the end of Melancholia with Kirsten Dunst. Oh, what a movie. What a great movie. It's so good. She, just get it all out of you because the moon's coming into the earth. It's going to crash. Oh, crash landing. I'm calling for an early crash landing for humanity. And you know what's gross is that there's going to be some creep on public transportation. No, no. Enter the German chancellor. <laughs> What is he doing? He could have a toilet seat app for this. <laughs> it's a cleaner version. Are you okay, sir? <laughs> Ew. This is, you know what's, what's ironic is this is how I clean my phone after the gym. <laughs> I don't know. I created an app. Uh, this is so unnecessary. I know. Doesn't it make you question our evolution, like our 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 mental evolution as as human beings, that someone thought that this and went into a necessary. pitch room and they were like sold eight million dollars. There you go. Yeah, that's a good question. I wonder how much upfront money they got to build this app. How much did this app cost? And how can they get their money at? Can they get can, their like, money back? In purchases. I'm gonna download a pussy <laughs> app right now. I'm gonna go home and Evan's gonna be like, "Do you want to talk?" And I'm like. <laughs> Let's see, pussy, <laughs> pussy app. It's P U S S Y. Wait, adult chat, hot hmm. naughty adult. No, oh, not know. hot and naughty. Oh, I feel gross. Hot and naughty be a great name for a boat. See, maybe search the company Algorithm. Clever. Al go rhythm. Yeah, that's the that's the tag on. Oh it. gosh. Oh god. Is it? They should have spelled it rhythm because of. It, it the style of the R H Y T H. Oh, okay, I can't see it. Is it, it. spelled like rhythm, like the yeah, we, like it's algo rhythm R H Y T H. Keep you dancing. R, what is it? R H Y T H M. I can okay. never spell rhythm. Algo rhythm. I don't think it's released yet. Well, I haven't released yet, and I probably never will. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pre-order. Um, why do you know that? Lee? Well, it says it in front of me. Lee mm, Lee got mm -hmm. the app update on his phone just now. Lee, I just got I, a notification. Yeah, You're number one on the waiting list. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm beta testing. <laughs> you're you're the, beta, the beta testing. version. <laughs> oh, Gross. God. You just They're... shove the whole phone in your mouth. Yeah. And then I put a little Pooh Hitler mustache on. Sick. Oh, wow. Way to round it out. Well, this woman, I thought this was kind of interesting. Her name is Paige Spurinak. Bless you. And she is letting the world know her truth because, well, her truth is surprise, she has nipples. Okay. I know. That this is this is TMZ, you guys. Bottom of the barrel, guys. She is a golf influencer and sports illustrated model, and she wants to nip <laughs> a wild conspiracy in the bud, saying her boobs are as normal as they come. And yes, you guys, she has nipples. <laughs> the blonde Is the this blonde, real? The blonde bombshell addressed the head scratching claims in a QA on social media this week when she discussed the wildest increase she's received from fans regarding her chest. Whether that she has her real breasts are fake or not, if she has any piercings, but now she says there are even rumblings that she doesn't have nipples at all. She says, I answer these questions because I think they're funny and I like being honest. And then a day passes and I look on the internet and the clickbait headline is Paige Spiranak has no nipples. Written by the same guy who created the pussy licking app. It, of course. She says that she does in fact have them and is able to laugh about it all. And it's safe to say she's going to make headlines no matter what. This is like what kids do to you when you're a little girl and boys want to know information and they just say stuff like, you you, you probably don't have any nipples. Yeah. Just to try to get you to show the nipples. You're like, I have nipples. No, you don't. No, you don't. You prove if you it. don't, if you, let me see if you don't. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't have nipples, I don't think you do. You got proof you do have nipples. And these are grown-ups. She should go to the portal. I want to go to the portal. Let's go together. I mean, seriously, I will jump into a portal <laughs> with you any day. We could just take a flight to Dublin. No, but then if we go to Dublin, I'm going to look for enchanted stones and like see if I can walk through them. Oh, so you sure you sure can. Yeah. Yes, I'm, you can. You're magical. You're I'm magical. Like, I will AF. definitely go back to the 1600s like that. <laughs> Just uh and 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 you're like Justin, you don't smell yet. <laughs> yeah, with burlap. Yeah. Wait with, till you have burlap underwear. Just a, a wool summer, hot wool <laughs> summer girl. That's Lana Del Rey's new album. <laughs> Nipples by the Beach by Lana Del Rey. Um, <gasps> Does okay. she end up showing her nipples? Or no, she just she should though. But uh, 
I can't I love, stand we, that influencer face. I just have to say, what's the influencer when they, face? The the photo that girls do, they're like, I'm so cute, and I'm I'm like humble, but also like, oh, yeah, and, they and you're like, their bitch, tongue. you're forty. Mm, yeah, put your tongue back in your mouth. Oh, this the like, uh, it's just like a cute like. Uh, I shop at Irwan. Uh, yeah, but she, I mean, she's gorgeous, but I doubt she has nipples. You don't think she has nipples? I don't think she has nipples. Well, here's another conspiracy prove it, prove theory. It, prove it, prove it. Page. Avril Lavigne went on talk. Uh, 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 hold on, call her daddy. There we go. She went oh, wow. on big famous. Wow. Yeah. And she's addressing a conspiracy theory <gasps> that yes, she does have nipples, but she's also addressing a conspiracy theory that was very popular. I remember it that she was replaced by a lookalike after dying 21 years ago, right down to the day. So, <laughs> do you re- <laughs> did, did you die. hear this? Yeah, she died. She for sure died. No. Yeah, hundred percent. So, 122%. There was this conspiracy theory that said that Avril Lavigne passed away 21 years ago and was replaced by a wom- woman named Melissa. So the Canadian <laughs> rocker has addressed her complicated identity on Call Her Daddy, uh, reacting to the conspiracy theory that she was replaced by this woman named Melissa. She says, it's funny to me, the 39-year-old told Cooper, um, like, uh, like on one end, everyone's like, oh my God, you look the exact same. You haven't aged a day. And other people are like, there's a conspiracy theory that I'm not me. So... <laughs> oh, God. Levine said it could be worse in the grand scheme of celebrity conspiracy theories, and it didn't find rumors about her death to be negative or creepy at all. She did say, Avril, this conspiracy theory about you is a little creepy. Come on. And Avril Levine said, I don't know. It could be worse. Obviously, I am me, so it is dumb. It could be worse. People could think I don't have nipples, but I'm alive. And And I have nipples. I have nipples. (laughs) What? Do you have any? I was actually... Nipples? No. (laughs) (laughs) How can you free the nipple if you ain't got no nipple? (laughs) I actually, do you have any like favorite celebrity uh, conspiracy theories? Mm. There's several out there. There was one that like Katy Perry was Jean Benet Ramsey. <gasps> That's a good one. Mm-hmm. That Katy Perry was actually Jean Benet Ramsey. I'm trying to think if there's, I actually had a conspiracy theory happen to me over the weekend right here at the comedy store. What happened? There you was could- Whitney Cummings gets on stage and she's talking about like, conspiracy theories. I don't know. I walked in like right at the end. I don't know how it got brought up or whatever. And so she looks at the audience and she's like, who else has a good conspiracy theory? And this dude from Alabama, full Duck Dynasty beard, is sitting in the back and he's like, Titanic was a conspiracy. And I'm like, (laughs) so my gay heart will go on. And I was like, go on. (laughs) Don't come for Titanic. In the background, you're like, I did that on stage, actually. <laughs> I, did I, did, you? I didn't save it did for the you? back. I let the whole... I knew it. I know you so well. Did you for real? Yes. <laughs> because he goes, Titanic was a conspiracy. J.P. Morgan was supposed to be on that ship of dreams, and he didn't go on it, and then the boat sank and killed everybody, and he collected all the money from it. And I was like... I did, I did oh, hear oh. that on a conspiracy podcast. But I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I was blown away. You're like I, the movie? I know. I felt like I hit an iceberg. <laughs> I was like, I had never heard this before. But of course, I'm like, whatever. But it also was like this straight Alabama uh, noodling <laughs> fish catcher with his bare fingertips just letting me have the Titanic knowledge. I was like, mm-hmm. That's also a great way to see how people lean politically. Just ask that question to an, uh, in an audience. Do you believe in any conspiracies? Anybody have any conspiracies? Titanic did it happen. <laughs> Hillary Clinton took her head off once and she's got <laughs> lizard eyes. And we're like, duh. <laughs> Al Gore is Jesus Christ. Allegedly. <laughs> Spell allegedly. Well, I'll be, I'll, let me, uh, I'll get Faces. back to you. <laughs> Faces. F-A-E-C-S-E-D. E-S. Faces. That's how they spelled feces in that article. I won't be able to sleep tonight because they misspelled feces. Oh, faces. 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 <laughs> well, we have one more story. Oh, gosh. And this is how to tell if you have dead butt syndrome. How dare you, Justin? I told you to not tell anybody. I, fa- I figured, you know what? <sighs> Who better to talk about? This problem in the world, one of the many, <laughs> one of the many problems, is Jessamay Peluso. Um, does your booty feel like it's falling asleep? Yes. yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> you could have dead butt syndrome, a real and increasingly prevalent condition that causes people's posteriors to go numb due to extended periods of sitting in one position. 
The sustained flex position of the hip and compression of the tissue sets up for the perfect storm of shutting down glute function or in the vernacular of the people, dead butt. Kelly Star... Uh, Kelly Starrett, a physical therapist and CrossFit trainer. Oh, Prove God. it. Prove it. Prove it. Everyone's a physical therapist on Instagram and TikTok. Called gluteal amnesia in scientific circles. This bum-numbing condition, which I think I have right now. I'm going to a scientific circle after this, by the way, so we have to hurry up. Okay, cool. Is it in Addison? Is it a bunch of women? It's on like, Venice Beach. <laughs> ready to... <laughs> bum they, they, they hand out ketamine and we all do science. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> This occurs when the butt muscles essentially forget their primary function. What am I supposed to do? I'm a butt muscle. You what am I supposed to do? You stand up and walk. I can't. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm, I was here and then I forgot my glasses. I came back in the room. I said, what am I doing here? You got, but I'm wondering, oh, look at this woman, the stock footage. <laughs> By the, the way, that's what she's grabbing isn't her butt. That's not her butt. She's she, got, I don't know where my body is syndrome. Yeah. No, this is I'm shitting my pants after <laughs> Wendy's. This is I, I threw back a burrito yeah. too fast yeah. syndrome. Uh, the cause, the cause is... Wait, hold on. The The cause of this posterior narcolepsy is caused by prolonged periods of sitting down uh, because people are working from home. Uh, they're sitting. They're fucking lazy. Lazy, whatever. This can impact the function of our glutes, which aren't meant to support weight for such prolonged periods. She describes it as such. If you imagine making a panini sandwich where you take high pressure and <laughs> high temperature and make a grilled cheese, sitting on your glutes all day is a little like this. I just got to stretch it out a okay. little bit. I got, I got, de, yo, I got de bus syndrome. That's some dead ass. <laughs> Is that where dead ass came from? Dead ass. Dead ass. Dead ass. Dead ass. Great album. But I want to call it uh, <laughs> dead butt syndrome. <laughs> I feel like they were like, we want to call it dead ass syndrome. <laughs> dead ass. But then someone was like, well, I have a better idea. What about dead but oh. yeah, the same guy who created that pussy looking app. He's never seen a butt. He's like dead butt. <laughs> oh, I bet that lady's butt is dead. This is how they poo in the military out in the wild, by the way. Oh, yeah. This they is right before climbing a slippery obelisk. <laughs> <laughs> get it all out. You by know, the way, you know I had a... on the guy below you. I have an appointment to get my slippery obelisk removed mm -hmm. after this. Also, they're performing at Coachella. <laughs> they next are year. performing at Coachella. Slippery obelisk. Yes, you they guys are. get ready. Right after. Oh, they're actually opening for Faces. I've that, heard Faces. Is that the new the spoken Grimes? word rapper? It's like the Grimes. Spoken word rapper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Faces and dead ass. He hums. Mm -hmm. He hums. Slippery obelisk. And Slippery Obelisk will be on after that. And of course, we gotta bring it back to Bleach Blonde. <laughs> Bad butch build, body. Butch body. <laughs> Bleach bod, but dead body. <laughs> it's hard to say. I think that's the new Susie sells she shows. Right? She sure. <laughs> are we le are we getting music to go off? Is this like the Oscars? <laughs> God, the song of the summer. <laughs> Well, looks like someone has dead butt syndrome. <laughs> Jesse May, tell everybody where they can find you, what you've got going on. I will be at the doctor's office getting my slippery obelisk removed after this. Then I immediately after that, I will be entering my scientific circle, which takes a little bit more shortening than one would think. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> plug, your, plug your podcast. Plug my dead butt. <laughs> <laughs> if you could just plug your dead bot, that'd be great. Your Shark podcast. Tongue podcast. Yeah. There is also a, a grief survival guide within the podcast. So if you know anybody experiencing any type of grief, loss, death, loss of a job, loss of yourself, there's a little guide in there in the podcast. And some Alzheimer's research and association and um, resources. So Sharp Tongue Podcast. Cool. Any show dates? I quit. Good. <laughs> I knew it was time. We're in. I'm somewhere. You're somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to be on the road. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. I'll be at the La Jolla Comedy Store Good. in October. Okay. Yeah, and I have a bunch of other dates. I'm going to be in Syracuse um, and some other cities. I can't remember. JessieMay.com. Yeah. And uh, Austin, Texas, I'll be at the Vulcan Gas Company June 15th. Uh, please come. Tickets are at Vulcan... 
Hold on. VulcanATX.com. That's VulcanATX.com. <laughs> we'll see you next time on the Just Saying Podcast. Take care. Bye. Love you. Love you. <laughs>